the, the minority in parliament, apart from these vettings, is uh, demanding uh, what they're calling an apology from President Akufado talking about COVID-19 because they flouted the COVID-19 protocols during the funeral of former CEO of the Forestry Commission. Um, we had the minority chief with Muntaka Mubarak who says the incident puts uh, Ghana's efforts against the pandemic in, in danger. Tell us a bit more about that conversation. So this is something that Muntaka Mubarak, who is the minority chief whip, has actually been raising and insisting that what we saw at the funeral of Kujo Sofiye, popularly known as Sir John, was actually out of place and should really not have happened all other things being equal. And mm. he thinks that the president owes the people of Ghana an apology for how come a lot of individuals moved into the space and COVID-19 protocols were breached. Uh, he makes the point that the president who set out the executive instruments that requires the necessary social distancing and all shouldn't be seen as breaching this. And he is more worried that the president, the vice president and key government officials were all present at the event when the said breaches happened, which should not be happening. Otherwise, we would not end up encouraging um, a lot of people to actually respect those protocols. So, uh, uh, just there's another suggestions mm, just on a how issues should be dealt with mm. going forward, even after we got the indication that a case of COVID-19 has been recorded here in Parliament, yes. one of them. Uh, and just, uh, just a quick one, and I one wanted to bring in from mm. those on the... Bring in uh, the, the minority chief uh, himself, uh, Muntaka Mubarak, so we can hear him uh, talk. And then we can come to the fresh COVID case that has been recorded in Parliament, Joseph. We'll come to you shortly. So let's listen to uh, Honorable Muntaka Mubarak made the point. We are insisting that everybody should observe the protocol. And we are doing the other thing. It reinforces the belief that, oh, we are just playing with them. But what we are saying is not true. And that also can affect the vaccination program. But it's when you believe that COVID is real that you take steps to do the vaccination. So if we are not observing the protocols, maybe because maybe we think we've taken the first and second jab. Remember, even with the first and second jab, it is still said that you only have, I think, up to 90 or 95 percent. There's still a 5 percent range that you could get. So I believe that what happened in the Sedon thing was very unfortunate. And uh, if I were the president, I would apologize to the country for that. Even though I, maybe that as the president, I wasn't in charge of the funeral. But getting there and seeing what was happening there, maybe the president should have moved away to insist. I have gone to programs. They will tell you in my constituency where I'm in charge of the program. I had to carry news marks, insisted for almost one and a half hours. They should bring enough news marks to give everybody there before I, I come to address them. We are concerned, very, very concerned. Over the weekend, I was in my constituency. Almost every guardian that I went, I had to complain. I was, few, few of us were looking odd with the nose marks and insisting on social distancing. People want to sit in a closed place, you insist that, no, 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 let's sit in the open. And I'm sorry to tell you, as we speak, I don't know whether the speaker may be announcing it tomorrow, one of us has gotten COVID again, here. And as we speak, he is at, at the, at the uh, what do you call, treatment center. And unfortunately, it's infested all his family, even though they don't have symptoms. We are only pray, praying that he gets well soon. He's stable, and we are hoping that he's going to get over. He has gotten the first job. At least he claims he got the first job, he didn't take the second. We want to encourage all of us to have at the back of our mind that COVID is not gone. Let's continue to take the protocol seriously. Let's continue to observe all the protocol. It's just too unfortunate that as leaders of this country, that needs to set exemplary, exemplary life. We went for this uh, John, and the president was there, the vice president was there, and everything went haywire. It's sad that when the church went to the uh, trade fair, they were being prosecuted. Now you have the head of state who signed the executive instrument with the vice president and all the others. Unfortunately, they were not observing the, the, the program. It's very unfortunate. I believe that things like this make people believe that, oh, we are just making mockery of them. COVID is not real. Because look, you go to the interland, the rural areas, the poor community, they believe, they, they just think that COVID is not real. 
So those are the concerns being raised by the minority chief. Uh, jo Joseph, we know that a, a new case has been uh, recorded in, in, in Parliament. You were talking about, okay, looks like I've lost Joseph Apukugako, but we understand that there has been a fresh case of COVID-19 recorded in, uh, in, in Parliament, and the House is working on, you know, fixing that problem, whether or not they'll have to... Wait, jo Joseph joins me on phone right now. Hello, Joseph. Hey. Yes, I do hear you loud and clear. So you were telling me about the fresh COVID-19 case that has been recorded in, in Parliament. And so uh, these are the details that we gathering that a member of Parliament um, has actually tested positive. He has been ill for quite a while. Over the weekend, a COVID test was taken, and it's been now that he's actually um, COVID positive. And um, the additional details that we're gathering is that this member of Parliament has actually taken his first COVID-19 jab with the... Parliament has actually taken his first COVID-19 jab with the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, but he hadn't taken the second one yet from uh, what we are told. And um, the indication is that even beyond himself, members of his family have also tested positive and the members of the family are all in quarantine as we speak. We're expecting today that in terms of enhancing COVID-19 measures and uh, MPs being urged to go ahead and prepare themselves for their second job. This was a conversation that was likely to happen on the floor today, but that never happened. We gather that leadership is still in deliberation on the next steps that should be taken so that MPs generally will be protected. But then yes, that's the development that's coming up that an MP has tested positive mm. uh, from what we're gathering. He was ill for a while, but is currently in a very stable condition. And the indication is that this would end up reviving the necessary efforts to ensure better social distancing and the enforcement of various COVID-19 protocols in the house. Mm, could just, just before you go, Joseph, the, the, the vetting, so we know that, they, that you indicated that there will be approvals, uh, uh, but we're also hearing about uh, Andrew Ejapa Mesa's approval, that there is uh, an issue with it. Tell us. So what usually happens is that when the committee finishes vetting on each day, those that they vet, they take a decision on whether they are recommending the approval or otherwise. And then the committee then gets to putting together their reports to bring to the plenary for the necessary approval. Yesterday, after the committee sat, they decided that they would recommend the three other MPs who were vetted yesterday um, for the necessary approval, but they withheld approval for Andrea Japamesa as Deputy Energy Minister for two main reasons. First of all, because then they had concerns that he had disagreed with the Energy Minister, then Peter Mbou, when the energy minister then said that the PDS deal was abrogated with ECG based on fraud, he thinks that there was no case of fraud. And then there were concerns that he was involved in PDS one way or the other because a firm that he was company secretary of TGS Energy Solutions was part of the PDS consortium. Um, it, based on that, the minority said they wanted to review some tapes and do some more consultation in order to decide whether or not they would back his approval. Mm. But we gather that earlier today, the committee met again in closed door, and they've decided that those issues are not issues that they would really want to hold against him and pull bricks on his approval as deputy minister based on. And so the minority MPs have withdrawn their consents, and at their subsequent meeting today, the committee has okayed him for the necessary approval for him to then become deputy minister for the energy ministry. So the mm. report that will eventually come to the floor would recommend the approval of a Jepa Mesa as well uh, for the role of deputy minister for energy. Gifty. Joseph, thank you very much. And I'll leave you to clean up the sweat uh, so far. <laughs> Joseph Opoku Gakbo there joining me from parliament. He's our parliamentary correspondent. Well, as you know, Andrew Jepa Mesa's approval, which was, you know, uh, delayed, will be uh, pushed through as Joseph reports.